This is Update One, the podcast of the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. Update One provides a forum for listeners to learn about national and international stories, focusing on journalism and communication issues, news and politics. Now, the latest edition of Update One. In the wake of the deadliest assault on journalists in U.S. history, a permanent memorial is being planned in Washington, D.C. to commemorate America's commitment to a free press and honor news reporters and photographers who have sacrificed their lives in service to that cause. Hello, I'm Bill Loveless, a member of the National Press Club. In this edition of Update One, I'm joined by David Dreyer, the chairman of Tribune Publishing Company and the chair of the newly formed Fallen Journalists Memorial Foundation. Tribune Publishing is the owner of the Capital Gazette in Annapolis, Maryland, where five members of the newspaper staff were slain by a gunman in their newsroom in June 2018. David joins us from the West Coast. With me in the studio in Washington is Barbara Cochran, the president of the Fallen Journalist Memorial Foundation. By day, she's the Curtis B. Hurley Chair in Public Affairs Journalism at the Missouri School of Journalism. She's also the president of the National Press Club Journalism Institute. David, Barbara, welcome to Update One. Great to be with you. Thank you. Great to be with you. Thanks so much, Bill. David, the idea for this memorial is yours. It was inspired by the Capitol Gazette shootings. Uh, You unveiled it at a news conference at the National Press Club recently. Tell us about it. Well, let me first express my appreciation of the National Press Club and, of course, the National Press Club Journalism Institute, which Barbara chairs, for uh, immediately stepping up and uh, taking the lead to make this happen. I can't say uh, enough about the partnership that Barbara and I have developed <clears throat> over the past several months as we have proceeded with this. You know, the thing that was, was most striking to me, Bill, is, is the fact that people have said, you mean there isn't already a memorial on the mall for fallen journalists? People are stunned that it didn't happen. And I was at a dinner in Washington, and tribute was paid to Jamal Khashoggi and Daniel Pearl, who very famous and famously and tragically uh, were killed um, in 2000 in Pakistan in the case of the beheading of Daniel Pearl. And, of course, the world knows all about Jamal Khashoggi's <clears throat> tragic dismemberment that took place in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, but not a lot of attention had been focused, or I don't believe not enough attention had been focused on what you correctly described, Bill, as the deadliest assault against journalists in the history of the United States of America. And while there have been a number of very tragic instances that had taken place before, the magnitude of this one on June 28th of 2018 really brought this home to us. This is not something that just happens to U.S. journalists overseas or to foreign journalists, but in fact, it's happened here in the United States. And so I think that coupled with the the sad closure of the museum, the fact that it's going to be moving from uh, its, you know, wonderful home right there on Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C., really led me to think that we need to have a permanent memorial. And so um, I contacted the, uh, my friends at the Annenberg Foundation, Wallace Annenberg, and the Jackie and Michael Farrow Foundation and asked for seed money to begin this. And then, of course, contacted Barbara and her colleague, Julie Moose, and some of my former staff members and others. And immediately, um, immediately, the, the, the response was, we need to make this happen. Donald Graham, who, of course, is the top leader at the Washington Post, having been publisher for years, um, said, David, this is something that we need to make happen. And so we've put together Um, Barbara is working on it constantly, uh, a board of advisors, and we're establishing other committees, Bill, uh, from all across the spectrum. We have people on the left and the right because I I describe you as journalists, which both of you uh, are, as the keepers of democracy. And you're really the cornerstone of our republic. And uh, I, I just believe that it's important, especially with journalism under attack, uh, around the globe as it is today, uh, I think that it's important for us to uh, to begin this process. And it's going to take probably, I mean, the average amount of time is seven years. And so Barbara and I are going to be uh, uh, linked 
at the waist for the next seven years as we as we seek to make this happen. I, I think I may survive it. I'll probably be better for it. I hope he survives it. Well, uh, David, uh, most uh, significantly lately, I guess, is there's been uh, legislation introduced in, in Congress in both the House and in the Senate. Uh, uh, you served as a member of the House of Representatives uh, from uh, California from 1980 to 2013. Um, both Democrats and Republicans are co-sponsors of this legislation. Um, what would the legislation do? Why is it needed? And uh, is it likely to pass? Well, you make a really important point here, Bill, and that is, is no taxpayer dollars are going to be involved in this. As with other memorials on the mall, it's private voluntary contributions. Of course, the most prominent ones are <clears throat> you know, the, the, the Vietnam Memorial, the World War II Memorial, the African American Museum, which has been built on the mall. All of this is done not with taxpayer dollars, but with private voluntary contributions. And so Barbara and I want to encourage everyone in your audience to go to fallenjournalists.org, fallenjournalists.org, to learn about ways in which they can support this. We not only want voluntary contributions, but we want the uh, we want their ideas as to uh, you know how we should proceed on this as well. So um, the legislation was introduced by my former colleagues, uh, four very good friends of mine, Ben Cardin of Maryland, who of course represents uh, the, the state, and Annapolis, Maryland, where the, the deadliest assault in, against journalists in U.S. history at the Capitol Gazette, which incidentally is the oldest newspaper in the United States, having first been published in 1727, so it's 292 years right. old. And so that's 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 um, that's Bill. Excuse me. That's uh, that's Ben Cardin's home state. Uh, my good friend Rob Portman from Ohio, who had a very distinguished career in the House of Representatives. He served as the director of the Office of Management and Budget. He served as the United States Trade Representative, and now he's a United States Senator from Ohio. Is championing this in the Senate and the House of Representatives. Um, my uh, former colleague, who is also from California, Grace Napolitano who is the second-ranking member on the Committee of Jurisdiction in the House of Representatives, the Natural Resources Committee, along with uh, my, uh, my dear friend Tom Cole, who succeeded me. He's now the ranking member of the Committee on Rules. For the last uh, 14 years of my uh, tenure in the Congress, I was privileged to serve as the chairman and ranking member of the, of the Rules Committee. And uh, so he and Grace Napolitano have introduced this. But we've got, a, a, again, a broad cross-section of Democrats and Republicans, people from the left and the right, because as I said at the outset here, Bill, this is not about politics. Uh, there's nothing partisan about recognizing the importance of journalists. So we, we are encouraging your audience to contact my former colleagues in the House and the Senate and ask them to, to join by co-sponsoring the bill. It's, it's, HR, it's uh, S-1969 and HR 3465 in the House of Representatives. Uh, that's the legislation, but it's the Fallen Journalist Memorial legislation, and, and any of the, the four names that we've just discussed are going to be the, uh, the co-authors of it. And we also are going to need the signature of the president well, of the United States on this. On, well. on that, David, so I, we want to build support. You know, there. it goes without saying the president has called the press the enemy of the people. Uh, do you think this bill is likely to pass? Do you think he would sign it if it does pass? Well, you know, it's a very good question, Bill, and 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 I appreciate your raising it. When on June 28th of 2018, when we had the attack in the newsroom of the Capitol Gazette, President Trump said, following that attack. No one, including journalists, should go to work facing the threat of violence. And so I like to focus on that statement that he made. Obviously, I completely disagree uh, with the notion that journalists are the enemies of the people. I just characterized you all as journalists as being the keepers of democracy, the cornerstone of our republic. Uh, and, uh, and one of the things I've said is that I happen to be a Republican. I'm, I'm proud to be a Republican, and I believe that Republicans should actually embrace journalism. Why? Because journalists challenge authority. They challenge the notion of big government. And I believe that that's why uh, conservatives and Republicans should actually uh, focus on that. And when I was uh, with Barbara, right after the introduction of the legislation, I spent time at the White House. I went for an appointment with uh, my longtime friend who served in the Reagan administration, Larry Kudlow, who's top economic advisor to President Trump. And when I was there, I happened to run into Sarah Sanders and and others. And when I talked about what it is that Barbara and I are working on, 
they responded very positively, very enthusiastically, and told me that they would encourage the president to be supportive of this. And I had a conversation with Mark Shore, who's the the uh, chief of staff to Vice President Pence, and Vice President Pence was long a champion of of uh, freedom of expression, freedom of the press. When uh, when I served with him in the Congress, and so I'm counting on uh, passage. I hope it's unanimous in both houses of Congress and uh, and the, the president's signature so that we can really begin in earnest our work to to gin up uh, you know the, the the contributions in the process and it'll be as i said a long struggle to make it happen but barbara is going to do all the well, heavy lifting well speaking of the heavy lifting barbara if the bill passes there will be a lot of hard work and it'll just be starting in a sense how do you go about building a new memorial in washington well, it's a very arduous process, but uh, first I want to uh, follow up on what David was talking about. At the press conference that we held here on uh, June 26th in, in connection with the one-year anniversary of the terrible shootings at, uh, at the uh, Capitol Gazette, it was so heartwarming, so encouraging to hear Senator Cardin and Senator Portman and Congressman Cole all talking about how important uh, journalists are to democracy, to keep democracy functioning, to make sure that citizens have the information that they need in order to govern themselves. And so in Washington, we have the three branches of government represented. It is only fitting that we should have some kind of a monument, a, a physical reminder to people about the fourth estate, which is what the press is, the fourth leg of our government that uh, that helps support our democracy. So that's why I'm so enthusiastic about this project. Right. Uh, we have our work cut out for us. <laughs> First, we have to get this legislation passed and signed, and then the work really begins because at that point we are authorized to begin working with the National Park Service to identify a location for this somewhere within the District of Columbia. Uh, we will have to come up with a design uh, that will be acceptable. There are all kinds of commissions and committees that uh, that. Uh, our uh, watchdogs over the look of uh, monuments and memorials in Washington that we will have to get approval from. This is under the uh, Commemorative Works Act here in Washington. And uh, in an explanation to people who undertake things like this, they've outlined 24 <laughs> steps that we will have to go through, 24 different levels of uh, approval and progress. And that's, that's why, as David said, this can take seven years uh, uh, or even maybe a little bit longer. We hope it'll be done in seven years. Not an easy task. Might it be on the mall? Probably not on the mall itself. That is a very uh, tightly restricted area. But uh, we had a wonderful meeting with uh, people from the National Park Service, and they showed us the map, and they showed us the areas in which we could think about looking for uh, a, a spot of federal land. And we've already identified a couple of places that would be uh, not exactly on the mall, but certainly near enough to the mall that uh, visitors who come to Washington would readily see this memorial. So we're hopeful. You know, you must already, already be given thought to what a memorial like this might look like. What would be appropriate? Uh, as I understand it, there won't be names themselves etched into the walls of the memorial. That's correct. This will uh, not have names on it, so it's something that can stand for all time. Because once the monument gets built, we turn it over to the Park Service, and they, using funds that we've raised privately, they will maintain it in perpetuity. So we want to make this uh, something that will last. And it won't be just for U.S. journalists. That's correct. correct. That's correct. I mean, we want people who come here, visitors who come here from other countries, you know, let's say Mexico, where more journalists have been killed in the last few years than in any other country in the world. If uh, someone is visiting here from Mexico, we want them to look at this memorial and think of the uh, journalists that they may know who lost their lives while uh, doing their work, doing their duty. Bob, you spent years in the news business as a managing editor of the old Washington Star, the vice president for news at NPR, executive producer at NBC's Meet the Press, and Washington bureau chief for CBS News, among other things. 
there is a long history of journalists losing their lives doing their jobs in war and under other circumstances. Um, Tell us about that. That's absolutely right. And I think we do think of um, those who fall when they're covering combat in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. Very recently, David Bloom, the NBC anchor and correspondent, died. So did Michael Kelly, who was a very well-known Washington journalist yeah. whose parents were Washington journalists. Elizabeth Newfer, who was from the Boston Globe and a, a very intrepid woman who uh, covered a lot of war and a lot of conflict. Daniel Pearl, uh, who uh, David mentioned earlier. Uh, we think of those people. I think what we don't uh, remember as often are uh, the journalists who've lost their lives here in the United States, with the Capitol Gazette being one example. But we're coming up very soon uh, on the anniversary, five years ago, of the shooting of two television journalists, uh, Allison Parker, who was a reporter for a station in Roanoke, Virginia, and her photographer, Adam Ward. They were doing a, a live shot for the morning show, and someone, a disgruntled person, came and took aim at them and killed them both. That happened very recently. So we have Maryland and Virginia right here in the capital region. Two journalists, television journalists uh, from South Carolina, were covering a storm in North Carolina uh, in 2018. It was uh, Tropical Storm Alfredo. They lost their lives when they were out trying to bring news about that storm to the public. So journalists who are uh, working for their local communities right here in the United States have sacrificed their lives trying to do their job. So that's what we hope that this memorial will also commemorate, uh, as well as those who've lost their lives in, in combat. And as David mentioned before, there is uh, a memorial to fallen journalists at the museum. In fact, I believe it was updated just recently with the names of those journalists at the Capitol Gazette who lost their lives last year. What becomes of that memorial, do you know? And, and might that somehow be incorporated into the work that's un underway for this new memorial? Well, I'm very happy to say that Jan Newharth, who is the chair of the Freedom Forum and the uh, museum, is a member of our board of advisors. So we're looking forward to working with her. Uh, there have been no plans made yet that we are aware of, but the museum has a wonderful archive of uh, journalists going back to the 1800s who have been uh, killed while doing their jobs. And that archive is something that, you know, we would hope would be preserved and something that we can link to because this will be a monument, but it also needs to be an educational opportunity as well. Uh, I think uh, we can envision maybe uh, some kind of an annual event that would take place at the memorial that would uh, recognize people who've lost their lives just in the past year, and that would keep this as something that keeps reminding people of how important it is to have journalists who are serving as witnesses to our history. David, your responsibilities as chairman of Tribune Publishing are extensive. Uh, in addition to the Capital Gazette, Tribune Publishing owns a number of other newspapers, uh, including Chicago Tribune, Baltimore Sun, New York Daily News. Do you see the men and women who work in these newsrooms any differently as a result of the, the Capital Gazette tragedy? Well, let me first say, you know, following up on, on Barbara's very thoughtful comments, that, uh, as, as you said, Bill, uh, I was privileged to, to serve for virtually my entire adult life, a third of a century since I was in my mid-20s in the United States Congress. And we're regularly described, those of us who served in public office, as public servants. And I actually put journalists in really the same category as public servants. Why? Because they are, well, it's obviously a business in most cases in which they're involved. The fact of the matter is, you know, bringing the truth to the people is, in fact, a very important public service itself. It's fascinating. You know, in my in my previous life as a member of Congress, I obviously would have, uh, on more than a couple of occasions, difficult encounters with reporters. I mean, we know that Donald Trump has. No one has served in public office without having had, I'm sure, a challenging exchange with a member of the Fourth Estate. Uh, that's a very healthy thing. And I happen to believe, as I said 
at the outset, the fact that journalists are the keepers of democracy, they hold elected officials' feet to the fire. And that is a very important role. As Barbara correctly pointed to the fourth estate, it's a it's an absolutely vital role that needs to be done because the people need to have someone who challenges them. Thomas Jefferson wanted the American people to be skeptical of their leaders. I like to say that we've gone from a healthy Jeffersonian skepticism, sadly, to a corrosive cynicism. But the fact of the matter is, this skepticism is a good and healthy thing, and journalists play a key role in making that happen. So I always am honored when I go, as I have just recently, when I spend time in the newsroom with the editorial boards of you know, the Baltimore Sun, as you mentioned, the New York Daily News, where I was just a few weeks ago, and of course, our flagship, the, the Chicago Tribune. And I want to say, in getting to the founders, I always like to quote James Madison, and this is inscribed on the wall bill of the Tribune Tower on Michigan Avenue in Chicago. James Madison said, to the press alone, checkered as it is with abuses, the world is indebted for all the triumphs that have been gained by reason and humanity over error and oppression. And to me, I mean, personally, as you talked about what the memorial would look like, that, that quote is the one that I would like to see inscribed on the memorial, because I think that as we look at journalists who've paid the ultimate price bringing us the truth, to have that reverence given towards them by the lead author of the U.S. Constitution, I think, is extremely potent. Well, I think that's an important thought to take as we as we uh, look forward to seeing how this, uh, seeing the uh, movement and the progress and and uh, I believe the success of this um, of this uh, effort going forward. It's certainly an important one, not only to those of us who are journalists, but also to the to the nation uh, as a whole. David Dreyer, thank you. Barbara Cochran, thank you for joining us today on Update One and and discussing with us this the Fallen Journalists Memorial. Update One is a production of the National Press Club's Broadcast Podcast Committee. You can comment on this podcast or any episode of Update One by sending an email to Update One Podcast. That's Update, the number one podcast, at gmail.com. Thanks for listening to Update One. Update One.